Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking once again about that severe weather that's going on. We have a tornado outbreak that is potentially going to take place today. We also have that major snowstorm going on up for the Rockies. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we could get upgraded to a moderate risk today? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now yesterday we did a live stream, I hope you were able to make it. If not, we have another huge live stream coming today. Be sure to check that out, that's going to be around 3pm, could be a little bit earlier, could be a little bit later. I'm going to link that in the pinned comment and in the description where you can go hit that reminder button and that's going to let you know once the stream starts so you can be there. We're expecting a lot of tornado activity today. But this was yesterday, and this was a supercell that dropped the tornado there in the panhandle of Texas. We were watching this one live around 6 to 6.30 last night. Uh, and then here was another one. This one dropped huge amounts of hail. We were looking at possibly 4-inch diameter hail uh, that the radar was picking up here. And that is just a massive supercell there with lots and lots of precipitation in it. A beautiful storm. Uh, and this was our total reports. We had three tornado reports come in yesterday. We saw two of those during the stream. Uh, so it was a pretty tornadic day. I do expect the possibility for more going on today. Here is the categorical outlook for today. Speaking of today, we have general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter greens. The darker greens is where we start to see that isolated severe weather threat there in our marginal risk. We have a slight risk, which is what we had yesterday for that entire yellow region. But now we also have an enhanced risk there in that orange area. That's where we're especially watching for the possibility of a tornado outbreak. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the individual impacts, wind, hail, and tornadoes. Now here's that wind threat, and this is the least expected impact that we're going to have going on throughout the day today. By the way, Saturday, March 13th, if you don't know when I was making this video. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location of damaging wind in that green region, and then a 15% chance within that yellow region. Uh, so that would only actually warrant a slight risk there based on that percentage. It's the it's the hail and the tornado risk, actually, that we start to see the enhanced risk uh, really take place. We have the 5% in the green again. The, the yellow is indicating the 15% chance again. Uh, but that red region is where we have a 30% chance of hail within 25 miles of a given location. And look at that little hatched area. That's where we're expecting the potential for very large hail to take place. I think over 2 inch diameter is when they start adding that, that hatched area there. Uh, so we're watching very closely for that. Now our tornado risk this is what I'm especially concerned about. Yesterday we had a 5% chance, a very small 5% chance. Today we have a 2% chance in the green within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, within the brown, we have that 5% chance again within 25 miles of a given location. But now we even have a yellow 10% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location with that hatched region, which means they expect the potential for EF2 and above tornadoes to take place throughout the day today. Very concerned about that. Again, we are going to be live this afternoon watching this with you guys, keeping track of those storms as they're ongoing. Now in a moment, we're going to break down that modeled guidance as far as simulated radar, also the temperatures, the dew point, the cape, all of those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at those high temperatures for the day today. This is going to be approximately 2 p.m. here on Saturday, March 13th. You can see mid-70s upper 60s around for the severe weather region here so we are expecting sufficient temperatures for sure the dew points are going to be in the 60s which reaching this far west is actually pretty rare this time of year so it's a very uh high precipitation high moisture event that we're dealing with here here's the simulated radar we're actually using D wsv3 to do this it's going to be a little bit more realistic it's going to be a little bit prettier so we're going to watch this play out you can see that the uh the timing is up there at the top that is going to be eastern time so you have to translate uh it's going to be one hour earlier obviously central time there. So we're dealing with uh, at about 1 p.m. some thunderstorms over in New Mexico. This is the Texas panhandle we're looking at. So you can see Amarillo there. Uh, we're seeing some thunderstorms up there, but it's by 2, 3 p.m. here where we start to see those more severe storms developing uh, just to the west of Amarillo and to the north. We do see some of those as well. These could already be in the form of supercells. Uh, it's really hard to tell. This is the same exact frame. I wanted to show you for reference where that enhanced risk is located, and that's where the best severe weather conditions are going to be located as well. So you can see they haven't even moved into that region yet. So by time we're taking a look at 3 p.m., here is the Cape, what we're going to be looking at. And we're going to see 2,000 plus within those orange regions uh, and 1,500 plus in the yellows and then 1,000 plus in the greens. You're looking for 1,000 plus or more for severe weather to develop. And we're going to have plenty of that all over the place. 
Also, the shear here, which helps tornado activity. Also, damaging wind can take place in these high shear events. We're taking a look at pretty much maxed out values here as far as shear goes, which is not going to help with the tornado situation. Let's just continue to move this forward with the simulated radar. This is by 4 p.m. You can see those supercells developing south of Amarillo, possibly in Amarillo, and to the north of Amarillo as well there. Uh, in the panhandle of texas by the time we're taking a look at about 5 p.m we can see this moving further eastward still some very high precipitation storms i do expect some pretty large hail course to be within these if this is to take place and by the time we're taking a look at 7 p.m things get a little bit interesting we're seeing more of a line of storms as you can see they're all kind of connected we do sometimes see tornadic events take place like this uh, but typically this is when the tornado threat diminishes a little bit once they're kind of all integrated like that uh, but I do think that with the conditions we have set up today, that's not going to impact the tornado threat at all. If anything, it's just going to continue to get worse and worse, regardless of if there's a line or not. I even see one out in front of the line that could also lead to some tornadic supercells as well out in front of this uh, line of thunderstorms. And then by the time we're taking a look about 10 p.m., these cross over into Oklahoma uh, in some areas in more central Texas, and these are still going to be tornadic by that point as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some more factors like our significant tornado parameter. And then we're going to move on to day two uh, and we're going to take a look at that tornado threat. We even have a day five threat as well set up. And then we're going to talk about that historic snowstorm going on for the Rockies. And then we're going to go ahead and close out the video. So here we are taking a look at that significant tornado parameter and really this is a tool that can be all over the place. We sometimes see this very high and don't see any tornadoes. Sometimes this is very low and we see a lot of tornadoes. But the one thing I want to mention here is that we have pretty much maxed out values here for the significant tornado parameter. Uh, we're at about a uh, 10 out of 10 here on the scale, but it looks like we have a maximum of 24.4. Uh, which is absolutely massive amounts of significant t tornado parameter here according to our HRRR model. We're going to be watching this closely, uh, but there is a high probability that we could see a tornado outbreak today, and that's why I've pretty much titled this this way and what I've titled the live stream as well because I think there is a good chance that we do see a tornado outbreak today. Day two, we do have a slight risk set up for Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. And as you can see, once we move over to that tornado risk, we do have that 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location. And then also the brown indicating the 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location as well. I don't think I'm going to be going live Sunday. Obviously, three days in a row is going to be a huge workload for my voice to take on a live stream like that. Uh, but if it does get upgraded, there is a chance that I might go live. But I'm going to have to update you guys on that later on. By day five, which is going to end up being Wednesday and through very early on Thursday, we do have a very large region of 15% chance of severe weather. This obviously leaves room for an enhanced risk in here. This is expected to be a slight risk at this point. That entire yellow region there, uh, the 15% chance usually translates straight to a slight risk. Uh, so midweek next week, we could be taking a look at another big severe weather event, in which case I would be going live again, like I said. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about that historic snowstorm taking place for the Rockies coming up in just a moment. Now, here we are taking a look at that simulated radar here, according to our European model. It's hardly a simulated radar. It's pretty low resolution, but by the time we're taking a look at early this morning, we already see some snow showers around, uh, but by the time we're reaching approximately 11 p.m. tonight, look at those thunderstorms in there, the darker greens indicating those thunderstorms for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. But we see very heavy snowfall just to the west there for Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Very heavy snowfall falling there. By the time we're reaching about 7 p.m. on Sunday, still ongoing for Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota. It's easy to tell why we're going to see feet of snow with this event. Uh, but by the time we're reaching about 7 p.m. on Monday, this is going to be really fizzling out. We do see some of that snowfall move up into the upper Midwest, but outside of that, it's pretty much closing out by that point. We do see another one move in by the time we're reaching Wednesday morning. Take this with a grain of salt. We're over 100 hours out here, but this is associated with that severe weather event down there for the Gulf states. Uh, you can see a lot of precipitation around. That is the day we're watching for some severe weather down there. So I'm going to have to update you guys on that. We're going to track that very closely because that could be our next severe weather event as we're entering into middle of March. We're taking a look at very frequent severe weather now, it appears. We're seeing day after day some severe weather activity. Now here is our total snowfall map. And as you can see, if you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. The blues, 2 to 6. The purple, 6 to 10. Pinks, we're taking a look at about 10 to 20. Uh, and then we start getting those other colors there, those more brighter colors. That's over 20 inches to kind of 36 inches. And then once it gets kind of pink again or kind of magenta color in there, 
That's where we're taking a look at about 36 inches plus. But I will tell you, this model right now is picking up a maximum of 85 inches of snow somewhere in there, probably for a mountaintop. So this is absolutely a massive, major historic snowstorm here. Absolutely incredible what we're watching. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we haven't really talked about anything long range. We're still out of six out of six here as we're talking about things that are one or two days away. Uh, the confidence is as, as top notch as it could possibly be. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, do you think we will have any tornadoes this weekend? We already saw three yesterday, so it's obvious what actually happened. But StormyCat77 said, I definitely think there will be tornadoes this weekend, especially on Saturday. There is a tornado slash hail driven enhanced risk with another upgrade possible. Uh, so I definitely agree there. There is that upgrade possible. We've had uh, discussions of them possibly thinking about upgrading it to a moderate risk. I do think that is possible based on uh, what we're seeing here from the model guidance, but we're going to wait and see. Again, that live stream is going to be at about 3 p.m., maybe later, maybe earlier, but it is going to be happening this late afternoon, early evening today. Be on the lookout for that. Go ahead and click that link in the pinned comment or the description to turn the reminder on so that you can be there once we start that stream. It's going to be absolutely massive. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.